In this video, I want to talk to you about cervical disc replacement. When a disc degenerates in the neck, a couple of things can happen. One is the disc can herniate. Another is bone spurs can form and an arthritic cascade can occur. Sometimes it's both. Patients can have neck pain, arm pain and numbness, and even weakness in their arms and even in their legs as well, especially if the spinal cord is involved. We wanna help you understand the nature of your problem and the full array of treatments that are available. Um, nutrition and exercise are almost always important. Chiropractic care, physical therapy, and pain management become a part of your treatment team. And uh, from a surgical perspective, sometimes we can go in and replace the disc. And I wanna talk about that procedure in, in some detail. First of all, cervical disc replacement has been around for several years now. It's been around a little bit longer in Europe than in the United States. The data supporting cervical disc replacement is as strong as just about any surgery done on the spine of which I am aware. Several randomized controlled trials validate the outcomes achieved both in the short term and in the long term with one and two level cervical disc replacement. So let's talk about how we do the surgery. Uh, the surgery is done under general anesthesia. The patient is asleep uh, and laying on his or her back. Uh, the, sur the, the incision is, is on the neck and it's between the muscle called the sternocleidomastoid and the midline. And we go right in between. It seems like it would be this barbaric thing to open up somebody's neck and it really isn't. The incision is made, um, underneath there is a very thin muscle which is separated and then you can gently separate the tissues until you get down to the cervical spine, usually with almost no bleeding. The trachea and esophagus are pushed over to the side a little, and the carotid artery is pushed over the other way. And again, these structures tolerate this well. Sometimes patients will have a little bit of swallowing problems after surgery. We identify the disc and bring the operative microscope in. And I think it's helpful for patients to know that we work under the illumination and magnification of the microscope when doing the surgery, which I think makes it safer and more precise. The disc is completely removed and the associated disc herniations, if there are any, and bone spurs are completely removed until we reach a point where the nerve on each side and the spinal cord in the middle are completely free of compression and are no longer affected by the, the pinching or the bone spurs, et cetera, that have formed. At that moment in time, uh, and we've decided this beforehand, we could either proceed with a fusion by putting a cage and a plate on, or we can simply replace the disc. These implants go into the disc space. They're anchored primarily by compression. So we've distracted the disc space open, and we take off that distraction once the implant is in, and it's wedged in there, so to speak. Once the implant is in position, we irrigate and close the wound and put a little skin glue on the surface of the wound. When patients wake up from surgery, they usually have neck pain in the back of their neck. And I think that's from some spasm that occurs when we've distracted the vertebral bodies open and opening up that disc. That neck pain can be present for a, a few hours or maybe a few days, but it usually gets better with time. I recommend that you use ice and some muscle relaxants and a little bit of patience as that process goes on. I already mentioned the swallowing issues. Most of the patients with one and two level disc replacement have very little trouble swallowing. Occasionally a patient will have more long-term problems with swallowing. And if it's been more than about three weeks after surgery, we send them to, to speech therapy for some assistance. Um, and again, most of the patients have very little trouble swallowing. Other risks of the operation. 
there's a very small risk of the implant migrating. And this risk is less than 1%, but there's a chance that another surgery would be needed to remove the implant and, and convert to a fusion, for example. There's also a small risk that the level that we've intended to maintain motion goes on and fuses on its own. That risk I don't worry about as much in a way because th the clinical difference isn't that great and uh, it's almost like a slow fusion, which is probably better than fusing it in the first place. So those are some of the main risks for you to consider with the disc replacement. What about the benefits? The benefits of disc replacement are really quite good. Over 90% of the patients have a good outcome. Most of the time, the arm pain associated with a pinched nerve improves fairly soon after surgery. Sometimes the numbness present before surgery persists, and sometimes the weakness persists. My experience has been that those two issues usually improve. They improve a little bit over a little bit longer period of time than the pain does. Um, long term, the patients maintain motion in most cases in their cervical spine, which is good for the adjacent segments. And the reoperation rate, meaning the likelihood that you would have to go back to surgery to do another level, is lower. Uh, and, and the patients can have a better long-term outcome. In all of the procedures that we do, we hope our patients have an understanding of the risks and the benefits and other options associated with the therapy. In this case, uh, physical therapy, chiropractic care, and pain management are always options and should be included in most cases anyway as a part of the treatment plan. If you're considering disc replacement as a part of your management strategy for spinal health uh, and have additional questions, please let us know. We hope patients going through this process as they evaluate this as a treatment option have a full understanding of, of the risks and benefits and can go into the operation if that is chosen as a, as a treatment option for them with confidence that they are making a sound decision and with the understanding that will lead to the best recovery and outcome possible.